G'day Art Snackers, my name is James and welcome to another month of Art Snacks Box Freestyle where we take the supplies from the April 2021 Art Snacks Plus Box, experiment with them to within an inch of their lives and hopefully create a masterpiece for the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge. Today's fun fact I wanted to share with you is I spent my 19th, 20th, 21st and 27th birthdays in Japan. 19th I was working there, 20th I was working on a cruise ship that sailed through there, 21st working there again, 27th I was just there on a holiday. So if you have any out of home country birthday experiences, let me know where you went and what you did. Alrighty, let's get into the box. Okay, here is the Art Snacks Plus box for April 2021. Here's everything inside. Let's unwrap that green burrito and see what we've got to play with today. In the Plus box, we have the Marabu Graphics Marker Pad in A4. We also have a set of five Tombow ABT Pro alcohol-based markers. I got the Pink Tone set. In the regular Art Snacks box for April, we have a single Tombow ABT alcohol-based marker. I got the red, which goes great with the pinks. We have the Pentel Arts Color Brush Pen in gray as well well as the Pentel Graph Gear 300 mechanical pencil in size 0.7 millimeters. We also have the Kuretake Zig Popoiro letter pen, and as per usual, we have the Art Snacks sticker and candy. So let's get all of that set up and have a bit of a play first. Alrighty, before we get started with the swatching, I just wanted to put a few clips in there to remind you to take that little ring off of that brush pen. If you haven't done it already and you're wondering why is there no ink in this, <laughs> I can hear it, it's just not working. Um, if you don't take that little ring off and then reassemble your brush pen, none of the ink will flow through to the end of the brush tip. I've done it in the past, so I thought, you know what, put some clips in there and put a reminder in <laughs> just in case anyone's like me and maybe thinks they got a dud. You do have to take that little ring off and then reassemble the pen and then it should be good to go. Uh, just give the barrel a few good squeezes and it will um, start to flow the ink down into the brush tip. So I'm gonna swatch out the supplies in the box today. I, um, I So first of all, I'm gonna share a few of my thoughts and my first impressions. I really love the color brush. I have actually only ever used, I oh know I have an orange one and I've used the black ones before and uh, they're really, really fun. One of my favorite things to do with the color brush pens is to get a dry brush look. I don't know why, but it just, it just feels so fancy. I just really love the dry brush look. Um, so I don't typically squeeze mine uh, very often. I like it to kind of run out of ink in the brush tip and give that really scratchy kind of broken line effect. Uh, so that's something that you'll see throughout this little experimentation. The Tombow Art Pro alcohol-based markers, I've never used these before. I do have the water-based Tombows and those are super fun and very vibrant. These are also very vibrant um, and nice and juicy. I was wondering if they compared, or not if they, but how they might compare to Copic markers because they are usually what I compare any kind of alcohol-based marker to. And um, yeah, kind of similar, not really in feel because the barrel is so much thinner. Um, these, these, I feel like, feel like a bit more of a, um, like an easier time than the Copic markers. Copic markers can be very intimidating. I do love them, don't get me wrong, they're great quality, uh, but they can feel very, very uh, like professional grade and very intimidating, especially if you got one of those big sketch markers. But the Tombow was really fun. I, I do really enjoy their other markers and these ones worked well. I'm not quite sure if it was user error or it could just be the marker paper. I'm not super familiar with uh, these cellulose papers, um, but I did have a bit of a hard time doing the blending. Uh, even though the tones of the those markers are really similar. Um, if they're if they're kind of similar, I think the optical blending did a better job. Like I think that's kind of picking up for where my user error might have left off. But I did have a bit of a difficult time with the blending. Um, that I'm gonna pop down to human error. This is one of my little experimentations here using the mechanical pencil to draw, and then I'm smudging the mechanical pencil with that marker. Um, you may think it's gonna ruin it, but those, I, I wouldn't say they're self-cleaning. If you just run your marker tip off on the paper and just kind of squiggle it around a little bit, you will end up removing any of that residual graphite from the tip. I would do that straight away afterwards. I wouldn't wait to do that, because you may, you may do some more permanent damage if you leave it on there. Um, also, <laughs> take all of this with a grain of salt. I like to be very experimental and mix media with my supplies. Uh, but it was an interesting kind of smudgy blurring kind of an effect 
that I kind of liked. It was a little grungy. So that is something that I found in this. Obviously all my little pencils smudging and then erasing. You can see in that pink swatch down there, there is, um, there's that pattern, that checkerboard pattern that I erased out. That looks really effective and I like that. I am also doing some lettering with that red marker and then going around it with the letter pen. I really like these letter pens. I, I think I have another one, um, but this, it's a very, very hard tip. It is kind of a brush tip. I wouldn't say it's a brush in the same way the Pentel uh, brush pen is a brush. Those are like individual bristles. You can get that uh, dry brush look. This is a brush in the sense that it's a tapered end. It, you know, it comes to a point, but I believe it's like a felt tip. Uh, the bristles do not separate. And it's very hard. It's a, it's a very hard brush, which I actually really like. I'm very, very, very heavy handed. And for the same reason, I like those 0.7 mechanical uh, pencils. This 0.7 millimeter, um, 0.5 and 0.7 are, are better for me than any of those really fine ones. I love the fine ones, but I'm just too heavy handed. I snap every single time. Uh, I snap the lead every time. No, no exceptions. <laughs> I have never been able to. I have a couple of them and I love them. I try to use them, but I go through way too much lead just from being heavy handed. And uh, there doesn't seem to be a solution in sight for me. So I do like the 0.5 and 0.7 millimeters. So all in all, a great little box of supplies that we're gonna play with. You'll see some of these uh, sketches today and you might notice that I'm not going to bring out the Hobonichi and do any thumbnailing. So I'll let you have a look at some of these close-ups and I'll tell you what we're doing in a second. Okay, so we've skipped the thumbnailing and that is because today on Box Freestyle, I'm going to show you a style study. Uh, what is style? Where can I get it? How much does it cost? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> a big topic, I know. I'm gonna briefly touch on style today and I'm only really gonna share with you my own personal uh, feelings, thoughts, and opinions. So take them with a pinch of salt, honestly. Um, but style, I'm gonna look at the style of a famous Japanese artist named Yoshitomo Nara. And you may identify some of his work. It's very sinister, but also very cute. Uh, not typical subject matter that I work with. I mean, once a year I get very Tim Burton-y in uh, all of my inspiration. Um, and so I think this is actually a nice little mix because to me this does look like kind of Tim Burton meets uh, kawaii culture. Anyway, so today I wanted to briefly just mention a few things about style because I think it's something that comes up quite often in lots of the conversations I have with people about art and their creativity. I think there's maybe an inherent uh, desire sometimes to feel like we're creating something unique or something that's uh, very particular to us and very expressive of who we are as individuals and we like to think that we can capture that and convey that with our art. So style becomes one of those really interesting uh, pursuits for a lot of artists. I have to say it mattered a lot more to me when I was younger than it does now and that is because my whole philosophies on art and why I do it have kind of changed. I do believe if I were to be more of a commercially focused artist, I think my feelings about style might be very different uh, because your style then becomes a bit of a currency. But as far as just having uh, art as an outlet, an expression, a creative expression that's done for fun or for enjoyment or learning or just as a pastime, I'm, I, I've never really cared that much to identify and solidify a style uh, since I've, I've just moved into doing lots of it for fun. And so it kind of actually opened me up to trying lots of different styles. Uh, and, and this is one of those style studies that I do when I come across an artist that I just really admire or I just have have always had a bit of a fascination for, a curiosity for, um, or it could be a new artist that I've just found on Instagram, and I just want to have a go at their work. I want to see what it is they're doing, how they're doing it, the supplies they're using when they do it, um, and it's all in an attempt to understand how they have fun so that I can know how else I can have fun. <laughs> it's really like a little uh, a little excursion into the, their world uh, to kind of fossick for a little 
remnants of their creative process that I might like to bring back to mine. And so I, you know, my own personal feelings about style obviously have changed over time, but I still believe that it's something that a lot of people, you know, are really interested in and, and a lot of people spend a lot of time looking for and working on and developing, uh, which, you know, is, is a really interesting thing. I, I also believe, and, uh, and I've, I've had these conversations before too, but I believe style you know, the, I'm doing air quotes here, I know you can't see them, um, but style is a really subjective thing in our modern age. Uh, I mean, I guess it always kind of has been in the way that I see it, but a lot of what we would identify as someone's style is really just what they've shown us repetitively. If, uh, if you look at your favorite artists on Instagram or YouTube, you may be identifying something about their work and, and you start to build an idea of what their style is because you see it often. If someone that you follow does lots of cute fan art and uh, there's a specific way that they do their eyes and there's a specific proportions, you know, the head's always much bigger than the bodies, uh, the more you see that and the more you see their name next to it, uh, the more we start to identify that style with that person. But it's also something that's interesting considering that we only more recently as a society live in a world where we can share that so often. So style used to be, um, I guess it used to have a bit of a different feeling for people, people used to have a bit of a different take on it uh, because a lot of what we would recognize was a commercial style. If you even actually think back into, uh, you know, I know we're not here for a history lesson, but if you really go back uh, into the days of like Norman Rockwell, for instance, if you go back to those days where a lot of advertising was done with illustration, um, people's personal style may have been completely different to the commercial style they would create in to be able to have jobs. And so I have been fascinated more with that, more with the way that uh, people sell their art and then the people and how they practice it and if there's any differences there. Um, I, for, the, for myself these days, I tend to just do whatever I feel like I want to do on whatever day I'm feeling like I want to do it. Um, and that has been very liberating for me, but it's also kind of diversified my quote unquote style to a point where even I don't think it's any kind of recognizable anymore. I mean, I feel like I've got about 16 different styles that any one of them could show up on any given day. And so, uh, you know, that used to be something that I thought was a really bad thing. I obviously, if you, again, I have to make the distinction here, but if you are doing some kind of commercial illustration or practice, um, you know, there is a big benefit to solidifying that just so that people know what they're going to get from you if they hire you. <laughs> uh, but for the personal practice of art, um, I've always been really interested in people who have wanted to solidify a style, even though it is just a personal practice and, uh, and the reasons that people might want to do it. I don't begrudge people either way. I think it's actually quite, um, you know, it's quite a noble challenge to go and uh, and find that out for yourself if that's what you want to do and it's also you know something I can identify with if style isn't something you feel the need to uh, kind of set in stone for yourself. I think one of the most interesting conversations I've had in style uh, was you know kind of the importance of it and I think it's just such a debatable topic not that I'm here to debate any of you <laughs> although you can absolutely put your feelings about style in the comment section I think it is a fascinating topic to read on um, but you know when you think about great artists and their style and the reason that we know them because you know their style was so specific we can identify a Degas we can identify a Frida Kahlo we can identify uh, a Picasso but then when you really look at it each of those artists had different periods of their life, uh, of their lives rather, uh, where the work was different. So in essence, uh, it, it gives us our great lesson in that style can change. So not only do I think style is subjective, I think it's more in the eye of the beholder. I think you're going to identify a style of mine based on what you see often from me, but that might be completely different to what I think my style is. So I think style can be a very subjective thing. I even think thinking of it that way is a little freeing too, because <laughs> then I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, remaining so to me it feels a little confining, but I know other people just really enjoy that. Um, but also I think it gives us permission and license to explore 
other things. Uh, that I think that is, I mean, I just said it there, constricting, confining. That's one of the things I always struggled with style is I thought, I'm not the type of person to commit to one thing forever. I don't want to just do the same faces forever. I know that I don't even want to do the same faces for a week. So <laughs> I know I definitely couldn't do it forever. Um, but yeah, Picasso and all of those different movements he went through, cubism, you know, surrealism, uh, the blue period, the rose period, uh, just one artist who moved through so many different styles and movements. I think that has been uh, something that has always stuck around in my head and kind of just reminded me that style is for you. It's about you. It's about that culmination of everything that you have found over the years that you've enjoyed, that you, you know, the colors you like, the supplies you like, the subject matter you like, the way you like to do it, and uh, and that it's allowed to change, it's allowed to evolve, and you're allowed to grow in it. Um, and I think it's a very personal thing. Uh, but I hope that has been interesting for you to hear about today. Just a few of my thoughts on style. There's my Yoshitomo Nara style study. I'm going to join you for an outro in a second. I'll see you there. Alrighty, there we go, all finished. This is my Yoshitomo Nara study page. I hope you had a good time watching that come together and uh, found that interesting to talk a little bit about style and what I think about it and how I think it's fun to study it in others. If you want to join Art Snacks, you can use the code JAMES10 at checkout for 10% off. And if you're going to take part in this month's challenge, don't forget to share your work with us on social media and in the Mix community using the hashtag ArtSnacksChallenge. I will see you again next month and until then, have fun. Bye.